Hi, welcome to the Quakes Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to look at the Air Enhancer plugin. A little bit of an unsung hero, in my opinion. If you use it in the right way, you can inject some real mojo voodoo magic to your mixes. Let's jump in. So as you can see, pretty basic plugin. We have a high gain, low gain and output. I'll get to those. Here we have a frequency section where you can choose the high frequency, the low frequency. We have the harmonics and then we have a phase button at the moment. I'll also explain that a bit later. What I think it is, is kind of modeled on the Aphex Aura Exciter, which is a really famous piece of hardware. There's also a couple of plug-in versions of it as well. And its job is to add some brightness, to enhance the highs to a signal, especially a signal that doesn't really have high highs in there at all. It's really good on lo-fi sounds. It brings out the alias in sound that we all love that you get from vintage samplers like the SP1200, SP303, that kind of thing. So, you know, as a basic explanation, it brings out, enhances the highs of a signal that is dull. So to kick off with, I'm gonna show you what you can do with a kind of lo-fi drum sample. Uh, this is a beat which is off the Crates Motel Beats Volume 1, which is available on Bandcamp. I'm basically over time releasing three minute remastered edits of all of my really rare open breaks, which you can use in your beat tapes or use in your tracks. Uh, so if that's something that you're into, please visit Bandcamp, it'll really help the channel out. So this is uh, just a quick beat here. What I've done is I've added a little bit of lo-fi to kind of bring it down into SP303, SP1200 uh, area. Uh, just made it 12 bit and just took the sample rate right down. What I wanted to do is just kind of give it that real lo-fi sound and add some aliasing on purpose uh, so that I can enhance it with the enhancer. So then I've gone, then, then we have the air enhancer here. Now, the best thing to do with this plugin really is to just to kind of play around with it, dial it in, and you know see what sounds good to you there's no there are some presets they're not particularly good in my opinion it really is a kind of secret source plugin that you add to tracks or sounds etc but you have to you have to dial it in so knowing what kind of effect the controls have obviously obviously helps so with a beat like this we can kind of bring out some of the highs if you actually keep the lows Around about 160, take the highs up just a little bit. And then you bring the harmonics up here. So you can hear that it's really bringing out the highs and the kind of aliasing and just excites the uh, the drum beat just a little bit and, and just add some grit and add some edginess to it. Now, I've seen quite a few videos and reviews on this and they say don't, don't touch any of this because it doesn't really do anything. I think that's a bit crazy because I actually think that this is where the secret source is. I think this is where you can really use the plugin to bring out something special which is what I meant by it being a little bit of an unsung hero. So with these highs and lows here, you can pick kind of what frequencies you're bringing the harmonics out on. And with this low gain here, which I've seen people say don't touch, it doesn't do anything. I think that maybe it's just a low shelf, but if you combine this low shelf, if it is in fact a low shelf, with the harmonics and changing the low frequencies, you can really bring out the low end in a sample really give it some beef and some width and some girth in the low end in a way that an EQ wouldn't do. I think it's just a combination. It sort of sounds to me like you're adding some low order harmonics to the low end and sort of saturation. I don't want to say it is saturation because I'm not exactly sure what's going on inside this plugin, but that's what it sounds like to me. So you, you can be quite generous with it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep looping the beat over and over and bring the low up and it really does bring out some weight in the beat, which is really, really nice.
So as you can hear, it's, I don't want to say analogy, but having used a lot of analog equipment right from the 80s when I first started, and up until quite recently, I was still using uh, a lot of outboard gear. It does kind of introduce, to me, it sounds very nevy, um, and some of the low end that you get off an API EQ, which is great, obviously, because that's a sound that everyone loves. So as you can hear, like, yeah, it's kind of really beefing up the low end. I, I'm really, really pushing it here, but it's not doing it in the same way that an EQ would do. And I, I would just really, really like the kind of sound that you're bringing out. And like I said, if I hadn't have touched this, I never would have known. And, and if you listen to a review or see a video that says, don't touch that, you wouldn't know. That to me is where the secret sauce happens. Now I do agree with people on the high gain. The high gain just sounds really, really harsh. There might be some sources that it works on, but for me, I mean, on this particular drum beat as well, I don't really even want to touch it. It just sounds horrific. And to be honest, with this as well, you have to be quite careful with it if you're using really high levels here. And I'm just gonna to quickly touch on this phase button here. Now, whether it does actually invert the phase, I'm not sure. It doesn't really explain in any manuals. I can't really find very much information on it. So I'm just really using my ears. It's, it's a button that you can press and it makes a sound sound better, or you can press it and it makes it sound worse, which is kind of what inverting phase does to a lot of sounds. So you decide really, it's source dependent, play around with it. What I have noticed when you're moving some of the high frequencies around here, and um, possibly if you are in fact affecting the high order harmonics, you can get some sort of phasing sounds that go on and it starts sounding a little bit nasally and a little bit unpleasant, a little bit hollow, which is normally the kind of sounds that you get when you have issues with phasing. So if you do start getting that, play around with the phase button, see if it helps. Um, and But, you know, like I said, I'm not exactly sure and I don't want to, you know, be quoted for saying that it inverts the phase and that's exactly what it does because I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced that that's what it does, but it can improve a sound and it can also make a sound sound worse. So, you know, just play around with it depending on what source you're using. So next thing I'm going to do is show you how I use it on a live bass and also a vocal as well. So what this is really good for, for me, is an issue that people quite often have when they mix bass is it sounds really, really good on their massive sound system and they've got a sub in their studio or they've got their headphones on and they can really hear the low end. But we all know that that doesn't always translate to a crappy Bluetooth speaker or some earbuds, etc. So a way that you can make a bass sound better, translate better on sound systems like that, is to bring out some harmonics, add some saturation. So it brings out some clarity in the mids and the, the upper mids. And this, this is what this plugin can do if you use it in the right way. And it's really, and you know, in combination again with this low gain that I explained on the drum beat, using it on a bass, a live bass especially, just really, really get, adds a real natural kind of analog preamp kind of sound to it and that converters thing again and also you know you can bring out some of the harmonics in the higher ends that would bring it out on smaller speakers which you know which is obviously really really handy in the mix so I'm just going to play the bass here and then I'm going to start dialing in some of the controls You see how much weight the low gain adds to the bass. It's really nice, and again, you know, quite high levels, but it just it just does something to the low end that EQ doesn't do on the MPC with the the various EQs that we have, and uh, yeah, that's what I mean by it being a little bit of a secret source. It's kind of hidden away, tucked away. So again, listen to it on the bass. I'll play it without. Get, let your ears get used to it, and then I'll drop it in. So 
So now I'm going to dial this in and it's going to start bringing out the harmonics a little bit higher up. And that's when it's going to start sticking out better on other speakers, so Bluetooth speakers, earbuds, that kind of thing. So just listen to what it does. It adds a little bit of clarity and a little bit of bite to the, to the bass, but using it in combination with the low end, you're also still keeping that real girth. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the enhancer on a vocal. And with the vocal, you can actually use the high gain a little bit. I mean, this is source dependent, it depends on the vocal. But I'm just going to bring out some real brightness to it, some air as such. You know, you've probably heard that used quite a lot. No pun intended, it being called the air enhancer. But it's just going to bring a bit of air to it. We'll bring a bit of edge to it as well using the harmonics. And I doubt the low gain is really going to affect this signal very much, to be honest. So again, it's going to be quite a subtle thing, and it just adds kind of a bit of bite to the to the vocals. Um, and obviously, it's a little bit difficult to judge here because I'm just going to be using an a cappella. I'm not going to be playing the the sample in context in an actual mix. But you can get an idea of how you can brighten up a vocal and add a little bit of edge to it. Live it up, live it, live it up. Don't stop, every day just live it up. Live it up, live it, live it up. Don't stop, every day just live it up. Live it up, live it, live it up. Don't stop, every day just live it up. Live it up, live it, live it up. Don't stop, every day just live it up. Live it up, live it, live it up. Don't stop, every day just live it up. So you can hear it just gives it some air, gives it a little bit of life, brightens it up, and gives it that more kind of that clean pop sound. You know, if that's, if that's what you want, you know, it just sounds a little bit dull and muddy before, and then just very, very subtly just adding a bit of clarity on top. So let's just play it again without. Live it up, live it, live it up. Don't stop, every day just live it up. Live it up, live it, live it up. Don't stop, every day just live it up. Bear in mind, I've been probably a little bit more extreme than I actually would be if I was mixing this, just purely to give you, to, to be able to show you. If that was sat in the mix, I can tell you that it, you probably could go that extreme because in the context of the mix, you probably need a little bit of DS in to me by the sounds of it but it just gives it air, it opens up a vocal and, and it kind of, it's almost like it's inventing frequencies that aren't actually even there. It's bringing out something and just adding a bit of brightness. So there you have it. As I said, very, very simple plugin, but used in the right way, it can really add a bit of magic to a mix. You know, try it on vocals, like I showed you on live bass, it's really, really good at bringing up the clarity and making it stand out on smaller speakers. It's amazing on synth basses and synth leads. It's nice on guitars. It's good on drums, it's nice on kick, 808s, it's nice. But it is a plugin that you really have to dial in and, you know, it's, it can be a little bit hit and miss. And, you know, it can be a bit of a frustrating plugin, which I think is why it doesn't really get an awful lot of publicity, not the same kind of, you know, people hear limiter, make it loud, maximizer, make everything loud. Enhancer, they kind of play around with it a little bit, oh, I'm not really sure what it's doing. But if you do dial it in, if you do kind of try and learn what it can actually do with different sources, it can actually be a really, really useful plugin and, you know, just add a little bit of magic, like I said. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing, mastering and MPC tutorials and reviews. This is the Quakes Motel, my name's Conan, till next time.